what's up everybody welcome back to my channel if you are new to my channel you're welcome my name is lily and of course as always i have an amazing gentleman in the building still on this series of seeing ghana through the eyes of other people so this gentle young nigerian man is here to take us through his journey in ghana i hope that you subscribe and like this video feel free to share as we welcome my guests so you are welcome to the show i appreciate the opportunity to talk to you this morning thank you very much thank you the pleasure is mine okay so you are a nigerian living in ghana and i spotted what you were doing and then i walked up to you because at first i was like doubting is he a nigerian <laughs> like yeah. i said okay that day like i asked you right and you said you're a nigerian i said wow and you do all of this and you said yes and i said i want to bring you to my channel so how long have you been living in ghana for so i came to ghana in 2019 um that was um in october 2019 so let's say from 2019 till death let's say four years Oh, okay. But under that four years, I've been going back and coming in. Yeah, so it's let's say two to three years fully living in Ghana, then one year interval I've been coming and going. Okay. What, what's your name? So I'm Precious Michael Akpanumo. Okay. But I'm mostly known as Presh. Uh, what part of Nigeria are you from and why the choice of living in Ghana? Why did you decide right. to come to Ghana instead of Nigeria? Alright, so I'm from Akwa Ibom State, we speak Ibibio, okay. and we are in the south part of Akwa of of Nigeria. He's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> He's my brother. Like so, I'm from Crossiva, you okay, know that. Definitely, like, I told you, right? yeah, definitely. Okay. So we are all related. Mm. So um, I finished school in 2014. Okay. And back then there was this notion that you have to learn a skill, right? Okay. You have to learn a skill because at that time. There was no lot of job opportunities. Exactly. So my dad encouraged me to learn a skill. I started with printing, branding, and then along the line I switched to photography. So after the whole four to five years of learning that work from whoever I was learning from, now I finished around 2017. Okay. So to be on your own, to set up your own business was a challenge. Okay. Because you know, at that time, you're not know, an apprentice, right? Mm, so you are mm, now trying mm, to. You are now be responsible exactly, for a lot of things. Exactly. So I looked at the whole environment where I was, which was Uyo, Acquire Boom State, and mm. I was like, there are a lot of people who are already in this business. Okay. So there are already people who have, let's say, they have those connections, they have that market, which you going in as a new person, it's mm, going to be hard for you to be very bring. challenging. Definitely. So. Me, I like using my hands to do stuff because while I was little, I could still remember from what they told me that when I was little, when I'm being, let's say, offered gifts like a toy car, I try to see what is behind. Like I try to dismantle yes, and rebuild. Exactly. So I was basically someone that loved working with my hands. So the, though I went to school, but I wasn't really in love with school. Mm, I loved mm. the technical aspect of how things evolve in the world. So that was why 2018. I was like, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And then the person who I learned printing, designing, and photography, mm. he also left where I was and came to Ghana. Okay. Exactly. The, where, where you learned from? Yeah, I mean, your, your yes, boss? Yeah, my boss. So okay. business was very, very bad in Rio. In Rio. So he had to like pack up and leave and come to Ghana. When he left and came to Ghana, I was still back in Rio trying to see how to make ends meet. And he called me one down, like, because basically I'm precious, but I have this brand name which is Presh. So everybody has been so evolved with the whole Presh that most times I forget that I'm even called Precious. precious. So he's like, he's like Presh. <laughs> yeah. What's up? You have to come to Ghana. That mm -hmm. was in 2018. Okay. But when he told me that, I wasn't prepared to leave home. Yeah. And my parents, as people that, they push you to do what you want to do, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm they also have that principle that you have to live under on that so, so exactly exactly but let me give you guys this let me say this shocker right mm -hmm. when i left to ghana i did not inform anybody in my family so i came in october i stayed for one month without like i had, I had blocked everybody off my whatsapp when i left 
Accra Ibom to Lagos, from Lagos to Ghana. So I was here for one month without anybody knowing where I was. So it was after I posted at West Hill Mall mm, that mm. my cousin now screenshotted the picture and told my parents that this you mall no, that this mall is not in Lagos. Okay. That this mall is somewhere in Accra because of the West Hill. Yeah. So that was how like, okay. So it was a big thing, you know. Like my parents nearly probably wanted to disown me and everything. Like I went through that phase of trying to do what I wanted to do, not minding the outcome. The, the, the outcome. So I came in 2019 and when I came, we started with the business of selling coconut oil. Okay. Back then it was basically pink lips and the oil which was for the we took care of dark spots mm. and probably we want to tone your skin so that was in 2019 when i came and mm. we're trying to still look out how we could go through all those legal process but when we came in we like we tried to um, let's say understand the markets of the country and we mm. now understood mm. that ghana is a place that if you have good and bright ideas right when you come in you could probably have what to do to make a living for yourself mm, mm. so it's just for you to understand what areas do you think is you lacking at, exactly yeah. because everybody is good at different things mm. now when we came there was no much demand for this e-commerce you okay. put, like you see online shops, online shops where they're running ads so ads facebook ads was not really that big as of that time mm. so people who knew facebook ads were like very little and mm. people who knew how to probably use one two three to form something and then sell were very little so and i feel back then the women back in ghana as of 2019 2018 mm. they were more concerned about just maintaining their dark Natural. skin tone exactly and just toning and blending not now that probably people have Everybody different want to exactly up. exactly so <laughs> it was really very possible to sell those oils for them just for skin toning mm. and skin brightening though it will still maintain their skin yeah so the process of me leaving nigeria to ghana wasn't that easy mm. And the process of me trying to blend into the country wasn't that easy because for like one whole year, I was not even eating their food. I was okay. eating fries. I used to eat spaghetti, rice, and indomie. Mm. So trying to come from where I was to this new place and trying to blend in and everything that involves me being okay in Ghana wasn't that easy. But I can still say I made the right decision to leave home, mm -hmm. not minding whatever, and mm. then coming into probably see how to make ends meet because there's this thing that i grew up with mm. that as a man don't want to take care of you yeah you are supposed to probably take care of yourself and also and care exactly so mm. there's that notion that as a man you mm. have to push no matter how if you try one way it's not working you have to push and try different doors. so that was the other door i tried which was leaving where i was mm. leaving my comfort zone to come here yeah so that's the whole story Process. of leaving Nigeria, bringing the business, not even like bringing the business because eh, it was, uh, yeah, no, without the anything, you came with exactly, was just the idea, idea, yeah, to come and probably try something, yeah, okay, exactly. So you got to Ghana, you and your ex-boss yeah. were collaborating, let's say, that was like collaboration, right? Mm, yeah, he wasn't even legal then and exactly. all that, so how did you break through to become on your own and... Is your business registered in Ghana properly? Do you have all the legal papers? Okay. So, I served him for 2019, 2020, and 2021. But you know, during that period, we had this COVID-19, mm. the whole lockdown stuff. So by then, I was still working under him because okay. I had to come, learn the business, know the markets, mm. um, the market survey and the market structure, and then know where and where I could. Because fit in. In, yeah, fit in because you know that you could still do the same thing with your boss, mm. but your own customers and your own grace that probably comes with your own business may be different from its own. Exactly. Though you are still doing the same thing, but mm. you also sell. Doesn't mean because, let's say, I sell oil and you sell oil that mm. we'll not make our own profits. Exactly. We'll all make our own different profits, be it we are doing the same thing. So um, during the COVID-19, I that was when i was trying to break out like not like break out in let's in say, of, say you guys yeah, are fighting. fighting so he was like he probably needs me to at least be on my own you know mm. but during that period it was very challenging because business was not moving 
people were basically looking for how to survive. The savings I did when I was with him, right? Yeah. Because as of then, he was like, you work for him, he pays you, mm. and then at the end of, let's say, two to three years, he will set Secures you up. Secures you. Yeah, exactly. So he sets you up, probably he work with his brand, or you have your own brand. We two that we're working under him as of then. Mm. So me and my friend, we coined a name, like it was one brand under two people. Yeah, so we first had this name called Adora Naturals. Okay. So the way the name came out, it was him, my friend, that brought the idea. Mm. Yeah, so we had the first brand name, Adora Naturals. That was 2020 when we left him. Then the COVID came, business was slow. Mm -hmm. But before the COVID came, at least we were able to still make capitals and everything. Mm. Oh, sorry, uh, profits and everything rather. Mm. So we were able to at least survive during that COVID. Everything had, had just changed. And even got to a point that I had to like suspend everything. I went to Nigeria, like I, I went back to, to Nigeria in 2022. Okay. With the plans not to come back again. Mm. So like I left Ghana because things were slow. So slow. Things, it was like, Basically, like let's say you are selling from hand to mouth. So what mm, you sell for mm, that mm. day, you are putting into your food and putting into your little expenses. There was no savings. There was nothing. So I left. I left to Nigeria 2022. Mm. I came back. When I came back, that was when I went back to Nigeria, and I now understood that <laughs> where you are, you even see one naira. Abi, it's 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 even far more better than going to where you, you do not have nothing. your feet. On ground mm. so you're trying to start up i tried this same thing in nigeria but i now like i got to realize that mm. what you are selling in ghana mm. for like if you convert the money you cannot sell that same thing in nigeria you need to sell like three four products you, to make up then, for. then without you having connections yeah, without yeah, your yeah. brand being big because one thing is in Nigeria, it's what people see, the yes, way you yes, package yes, your product, yes, 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 your yes. package your mm. brand. That's why you see those big brands they sell because they have influencers, they, they have, have people yeah, who have, so you, paid all exactly. these so you, you, a small brand trying to push or oh, no. no so, matter how good your products are. I had to come back home. <laughs> I came back in October last year and at least where you are, no matter how bad it is, as far as you could still see that daily bleed, uh, bread, sorry, coming, mm, in, coming in for, for you, you it's if, better. If it's just food that you're eating, <laughs> it's, it's better. okay. It's, it's, hmm. it's, it's far more better. So when I came back, everything worked out. The FDA was approved and so far, so far, business has been good, Aww. has been good. But this is the good side I'm telling you about yeah, everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll definitely have the bad side of my experience staying okay, in Ghana. Okay, so tell us about uh, what is your challenges um, doing business in Ghana as a Nigerian, especially your kind of business? Because in Ghana here, I feel like there's a lot of competition. Yeah. I have been using the local hair creams and the rest. Okay. Though I've used yours, and that is why you are here, because they are very effective. My edges from nowhere, they have come back. So that is why I'm like, okay, I need to talk to you. So how do you deal with the competition? Because there are a lot of good brands out there as well Definitely. in Ghana and you are not a Ghanaian. How, how, what is it? How do you market? How, what is the challenges? Tell okay. us about them. The basic challenge is language. Okay. Language is Barrier. the basic, yes. Mm. So when someone wants to buy from you, he says, hello. It is saying, and you're like, hello, speak English. Fraud. It's a turn off. Fraud. Instantly, the call ends, or probably they block oh you on WhatsApp. Oh so, 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 it's, it's even better now. Mm. When we start this business, eh, like, once they're like, hello, and you're like, hi, please speak English, they end the call. And then, WhatsApp, it's either they ask you for your picture. So, let's say you're buying from me and you're a Ghanaian, right? Mm. And then, you don't believe that when you send money from let's say Kumasi to Accra that will send your product. You, yeah. So you now ask me to send a picture of myself, okay. where I'm living, my house, like Then he asks you for your passport no, I no, to snap no, like, like no 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 like basically like your picture yourself. So so <laughs> it was that was the first challenge, the language and then trust. Because a kind of notion they had about we Nigerians mm. is or not even is was very very bad. But you so, know you know why, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. So 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 trying to blend in, correct doing that impression. Exactly, yeah. So trying to correct that impression, doing a legal thing mm. was very very challenging because no matter what you tell someone that you're not 
whatever they had given yeah. us at that time, right? They will still say you are among them. They will still say you are part of them. Mm, so see your blood. language <laughs> was a barrier, then trust. Oh. Because we do business online. Okay. So we advertise on Facebook. Mm, okay. So you see our ads on Facebook and you want to buy, right? Mm. So it's either you call or you WhatsApp. Now, if you call, I don't speak your language. I speak English. Mm. And then I'm like, okay, what do you want to buy? Uh. Then you're like, uh, Uti tree. Mm. And I'm like, no. I'm like, ah, fraud, fraud. Uh. Like, I don't blame them because when I get to hear stories of what people have gone through, whereby they send money for products and mm. they yeah. block, they get blocked. Uh -uh. Before collects. Another thing too is Nigerians, right? Mm. Based on those who do that kind of work, so they also infly, like they also try to impersonate you, infiltrate our own side of the mm. business, mm. which is opening an account trying to sell also online exactly. but they are not doing the legal stuff so it's now very hard for we who are doing this legal business to also try to win the trust, yeah, win the trust. because you will see how they will say okay ah i texted someone and mm. he scammed me he's also selling the same thing you're selling and do you know that there are times that people too i don't know i wouldn't say nigerians or Ghanaian, but i'll just say people mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. go online they take our pictures open their own page so when you're also like when you're trying to run an ad on facebook with your own picture mm -hmm. someone is also there under your facebook comments redirecting your customers saying his call ex page. exactly so saying call and whatsapp or even pasting his link on his and you know people would always Four out of X. 10 one person will always go to two the wrong people. side is that all two so you when when they go down there and probably buy and then get scammed they now come back to your and own accuse you. and accuse you and be like i sent you money you did not send it for me so the first thing was was language trust and then trying to change that narrative that not every, every nigerian, nigerian is a is, 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 is a first star and the police too is also a challenge okay the other day okay so like how uh, the issue of the police how is that a challenge my joy is that when i ask you you said the product is registered and yeah. you even showed me and all yeah. of that so are they still harassing you even with that with the fact that you're registered i mean what is the problem with the police okay so i feel another thing is where you stay matters right okay so let's say kaswa mm. as a community mm. has that stereotype too but back then while at kaswa right mm. There was this notion that you living in Kaswa that you are probably a scammer or you're a fraudster because once you're an Nigerian coming to Ghana, the mm. first point of call where you land is Kaswa. Maybe Kaswa. Yes. So at that point, I was staying and doing my business in Kaswa. It was really a challenge because no matter what you tell the people. police or you tell people, once they come to your house and then you see that they they use your house to rate you. Mm -hmm. So when they come into your house, they look at how your house is to rate you to know the kind of work you are doing, yeah. what probably they will charge you with or how much you probably pay for whatever they accuse you of. So let's say they come into your house and you are staying probably in a, in a chamber hall, let's say mm. like a, a self con mm. and it's not fully pimped, right? They'll be like, okay, fine, you are just, even, if, even if you are not a scammer, but let's say They'll be like, you just left the office, like your chairman's office. So let's say you're just trying to set to set you want to exactly. So let's so they just look at you and be like, at oh, this one, let's leave him. So okay. back then, we were staying in a two-bedroom flat. Mm. When they come, they see four boys in the house. <laughs> the house is fully pimped. They would not, no matter what you tell them, they would they just tell you that they would just tell you that this is just like a cover-up. That what okay. you are selling is the cover-up. So that they know what you are doing. So that what you are selling is just what you are doing to like cover up the whole business of you scamming. Mm. So it's like what people do like when you are scamming, right? Mm. You now come out and open a boutique. So a boutique is like your frontal. Yeah, just yeah. yeah you exactly. know how people do that, right? Exactly. But it's very easy for you to prove yourself. You know that. Yeah, it is. But you know that sometimes you have to go to the police station and prove, and it will cost you something. But you know that that. But once you get to the police station, <laughs> hey, everything has changed. You can't come back. You are not <laughs> going there to prove yourself. <laughs> once you're in the station, they, like, the whole thing has changed that they caught you as a Nigerian. 
So when you are at the station, you are going there probably to sort out your bell, or you are going there to at least pay, or probably just make sure that they don't come back. <laughs> so, so, they, so there was no way to change their mindset. So we're like, okay, fine, let it just be there. Mm. Bad as it bad, when they come, we explain whatever exactly. happened. Last, last, they'll still use money to solve the problem. Exactly. But do you know that, you got to a point that it was no more about money. Okay. It was not about you being Nigerian. Mm. You being a Nigerian, living in that part of um, Accra, which mm, was which Kaswa, Kaswa as of then. So I've been arrested and handcuffed. Yes, I've been, I've been, I've been handcuffed and then taken to the station just like that. We priced them and everything was a thousand. I left. That was part of the reason why I left Ghana in okay. 2022, mm. uh, March. Because everything had just made me be so destabilized. I was, I, I was having this, this yeah, back and forth from I was traumatized. I was like, what's really going on? Things are not moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, exactly, at the, at the same time, I'm still being harassed. Then, What's that thing that makes them yeah. really... So there was this time again they came, right? And then they said they're from Accra. Mm. They came into my house, saw the product. Do you know, as they entered my house, they were like, anchor of this guy. Mm. Then the house down that the boys who were doing this thing that we hey, all feel. Hey, yow, yow, yow. They just took these boys into the car. Then they were treating but, them a VIP treatment. But you, me, I was... <laughs> the legitimate hustler. So, so they now took us, drove us to a vendor okay. for us to withdraw money and pay so you have gone through all of this i want to suggest something i am thinking that probably you were going through all of the harassment because you were living with a group of people how do you source for customers now that with all the challenges of getting people to believe you and all that do you have like people distributors do you have distributors okay. yes definitely so at first we were always selling on facebook like we're doing this e-commerce whereby mm -hmm. you run facebook uh, facebook adverts right and then you are um, being called or WhatsApp for the product. But you know, as months pass, as years pass, you, your business keeps um, boosting, it keeps yeah, improving. Yeah. Because it the products are good, it, I'm using them. It keeps getting bigger, right? Mm. So you also have to look for new avenues. So currently, we have what they call retailers. Okay. So they retail our products. Mm. Now what we do is, depending on locations, so we have people in Accra, we have people in different areas in Accra as, as a whole. Mm. Then outside Accra, Kumasi, um, Takradi, um, Cape Coast, um, where else? Um, we have someone at Borga. Mm. Yeah, we have wow. someone at okay. Obuasi. So what they do is we um, retail for them mm. to sell because we will not be able to advertise to that very in a broad area. Mm -hmm. So people now take interest and because of how our product is very effective mm. so people now take interest interest to want to buy and yeah. resell mm. so when they see that actually they are making profits and then people and who are buying exactly so people who are also buying are also getting improvement they're also mm. seeing the products beneficial for them they also come to buy again from us so what we do now is we sell through retailers okay. but that doesn't mean that if you want to also be a retailer that is we don't open um okay. the, like there's no an open slot for you we still okay. have open stuff for people that want to come and retail for us okay definitely okay. it's getting better so things are getting better definitely so um i the beginning i should have asked you what and what do you produce and what you you know tell us about your products all right so our products mm. we have hair creams and oil mm -hmm. that's for those who want to grow their hair and their beards right mm. then we also have the pink lip balm the pink lip balm is for people who want to probably lighten the lip. Mm. Then for people who also smoke, that their lips are kind of dark yeah. or stained, that also helps in brightening, brightening the lip. Lips. Yeah. Mm. And we also have the teeth whitening products, also smokers, right? So, you know, when you smoke excessively, you also mm. get those things on your teeth. Then if you have stains, people be decide to go the medical way. Okay. But do you know that if you use charcoal on its own to scrub your teeth regularly, mm. it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it yeah. whitens the teeth. So mm. our product also has charcoal in it, which using it consistently, 
it's going to whiten your teeth. So it has gone through all the due tests Def and all that? Definitely, it has gone through FDA approved, the hair oil and cream, the pink lips, Every the day, yeah. teeth whitening. So we also have the skin toning set. Mm. That one is basically for people who want to tone their skin. Okay. Yes. So we have the teeth whitening, the hair growth sets, the pink lip and the skin toning set. Okay. Yes, so please. ever since ever since you started your business and doing you have not got any complaint from anyone coming to say, Oh I, I have this reaction. Oh. So we have had negative feedback. So when we have that we try to improve our production process okay. and we also try to improve our, our our services to us as a whole so you as a young nigerian escaping because what you did was escaping you know you didn't tell anybody you ran to ghana exactly. when you go here yeah. what what how did you feel like when you first go, you got here at night or daytime how what was what ran through your mind so i left lagos and then I was nervous. Mm. I was so nervous because you know when you leave home to a new place and you don't tell anybody, right? And so I had this, anyhow it be, make it Good be, I go survive. So I left Lagos in the night and I arrived Ghana in the afternoon, which was my first time. Mm. So when I got here, right. no much difference. No, 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 no much. Okay. No, there's a difference though. Okay. The constant light is a turn on yeah so it's really 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 a turn on the constant does that, light does that in any way uh, um, oh it helps it helps it helps because it helps because like you need electricity to make mm, your products not really that but mm. basic basic um, let's say the basic human want is mm. light water right so you being a place that has constant light there's advice for you to try to see what's like Try yeah. to put your hands in different things, and you, you and feel. And you brings happiness. Oh, definitely. On its own. Definitely. So, you stay in a place without light. Ah, most times, I feel stay in a place that there's no basic human want. It mm. does. It does your thinking Something ability yeah. exactly. It doesn't make it to be, let's say, smart and probably yeah. think think wise or think far. You're not happy. Exactly. So yes, there are there are some things that have also helped being in Ghana, like okay. what they have also pushed. Mm. To assess me now, too. like, do you have any? With all of your experiences in okay. Ghana as a Nigerian youth who came to Ghana with legitimate intention, and you are doing just that, but because of the practices of others, it has affected you in in many ways. Now, do you have any advice? Do you have anything to tell your fellow Nigerians who are probably the ones? getting you into this you know creating this impression about nigerians mm. now one thing about me is i don't like to judge people because for everyone that's going through a phase mm. there's a reason why for me to have left where i was to come to ghana i had a reason why right mm. so for you to probably do what you are doing there's a reason why though when you want to look at it in a larger scale mm. is not right okay. but you that left where you were to come here and do what you want to do probably you know why but the thing is when you do this thing how long do you want to do it do you think you would do this thing forever or is it that it's peer pressure or is it something that you left your country to come and do so i don't know how people see it but i feel if you are doing something that you feel is not right, right? Let's say out of peer pressure or out of because your friends told you to do them or because of what you see. Don't you think that with time, it could be okay for you to probably clean yourself up? Yeah, some of them clean. Do but it's affecting us. You know, for me, I've always been vocal about I'm okay. not, I don't judge people. Yeah, definitely. Before. But things that people do that turn out and affect me as a Nigerian, okay. I condemn it. Okay. You get it? So they should know that whatever they do, it's not just about them. They do all of these things there's to a, get there's a larger. Own. Yeah, so there's it's a, affecting a lot of... Definitely, definitely. You know, I feel also that another thing is they... Government, mm. both Nigeria and Ghana, mm. they're not also helping in this aspect. Okay, how would they? How would they? So, you know, here in Ghana, mm. normally you're not doing something right. Okay. The police come in, to ask you what you're doing, right? Mm. And you try to probably tell them this, this, this. Normally, 
if it's an illegal system, you should be charged for that, right? You get it, but, but they collect the exactly. money and still allow you so, to so, pay. So you are also trying to sort yourself out and then the next time again, you are still... So it's, you use money to solve your problem. But mm. if it was an illegal aspect, okay, they'd be like, okay, fine, this, what you're doing is not proper. Not, so for this, go through a Go government. through this process or probably you are being deported. It's, so if the government deports Nigerians on a regular that are caught, that are that caught, caught, yeah, that are caught in that aspect of crime, which is bringing that kind of that, reproach yeah. to we Nigerians who are doing legal work, it will kind of send a warning out. But whereby everything is back pocket, back pocket, hey. back pocket, back pocket. Ah, it's still gonna be. It like makes that. it makes people feel like okay, fine, I can come in from mm. Nigeria. Last last, I'll still bribe my way. I'll settle yeah, I'll settle them. I'll, 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 so. So the police has a role to play. So everybody has a role. The mm. police, the government, I'll and you yourself, who else, who is also doing this thing? Mm. Is it really proper? Is that what you want to do? Or do you think how long will you keep doing this stuff? And do you you think that there's a punishment? Because there's this thing that People says don't you reap. You don't you, know. you, yeah, definitely. But but you reap what you sow. They don't have. They don't it, it, it might not be now, but yeah. don't you think that? This thing you are doing, no matter how long it is, you will pay. You definitely pay for it because it's people's hard earned sweat, people's hard earned resources that you are probably taking out. I have not really seen a young boy that ends well. Uh, Except the ones that repent. Okay. They are not coming, okay? We Nigerians, a lot of people don't know, but okay. tell them we Nigerians do not suck. Charles. So, Fluff. yeah, Fluff. F L O O V E. Fluff. Okay. Fluff Naturals on Instagram. So, when you get there, you could see an, our. Our call number, our WhatsApp link, and you can also buy through Instagram too. Okay. Then you could see uh, our different products outlined in our Instagram page. So okay. flow of naturals on Instagram. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to get the Instagram handle and link it on the description. Uh, in the description of this video, don't forget to check him out. Don't forget to patronize him. When we see legit young Nigerians doing legitimate works in Ghana, I am not even hesitating to show them off. I'm proud of you. Thank you for coming on the channel. Uh, guys, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you in another video. Bye-bye. Thank you for coming, okay? I appreciate this.